So during these times when we're really not supposed to be leaving the house, it's nice to find alternative uses for things that would otherwise go in the trash. Today I'm going to be talking about two soil amendments that you've probably got laying around the house, possibly ready to throw away. However, both of these things come with strong warnings. So stay tuned. If this is your first time here and you are looking to join a garden community that offers tips, tricks, and support to grow your best garden ever, then start now by clicking subscribe and hitting the bell so you're notified every time we upload a video, which is three times a week, Sunday, Tuesday, and Friday. Now let's get growing. Today we're going to be talking about using wood ash and coffee grounds in the garden. Now if you've had experience with either one of these, good or bad, let us know down in the comments. Now I've been using both in my garden for years and they offer some really great benefits. However, they also come with some serious side effects that may or may not make them good for your garden. So we're gonna talk about that. Plus, if you stick around to the end, I'm going to show you a really cool, fun test to see what the pH is in your garden soil and you don't have to go out and buy anything. Okay, we're gonna start with coffee grounds. Now, if you've been to Starbucks lately, well, probably not lately, but in the recent past, then you've probably seen a bucket of bagged, used coffee grounds near the door. Now, if you didn't grab that bag and run, then you probably aren't aware of the benefits that coffee grounds provide to your garden soil. Now they're not really a strong fertilizer coming in with an NPK of nitrogen 2.1, um, phosphorus 0.3, and potassium 0.3. Plus the nitrogen doesn't break down in the soil for a while, so it's not immediately available to your plants. But it does offer some really great trace elements, such as magnesium, copper, calcium, manganese, zinc, and iron. Plus they're a really good source of organic matter that worms absolutely love, and they're really beneficial to the microorganisms that live in your soil. However, to apply it, you don't want to mix it in with the soil. Because what happens is when you mix it into the soil and the microorganisms are working to break it down, it's actually taking nitrogen from your soil for that process. And so it can stunt your plant's growth until the coffee grounds are completely broken down by the microorganisms. Another reason you don't want to dig it into the soil is if there's any caffeine left in it, caffeine can stunt your plant's growth as well. Now, speaking of caffeine, if you've got pets like Boomer here that tend to eat the soil in your garden, you're weird. Then you want to make sure that you sprinkle the coffee grounds in an area where the dogs or other pets can't get to because caffeine is detrimental to their health, at least until it's had a few waterings to leach some of that caffeine out. Now, one myth out there that you might have heard of is that coffee grounds, uh, when you add them to your garden, it actually will increase the acidity of the soil. That's actually not true unless it is unbrewed coffee grounds. Once it's brewed, the acid in the coffee grounds is actually in your cup of coffee and it leaves the grounds themselves pretty much pH neutral. So it's not going to raise the acidity around uh, your plants. Now, if you want to raise the acidity around certain plants like azaleas or blueberries, then you can sprinkle some unused fresh coffee grounds around those. But otherwise, it's not going to make much difference in your soil pH. So just in case I haven't balanced out the positives with the negatives, I have one more negative for you. But before I, t before I tell you that, just know that I'm going to give you a way to negate all the negatives, keep the positives, and be able to use coffee grounds in your garden no matter what. So one more negative is that if you put a layer a thick layer of coffee grounds as a mulch 
it actually can repel water because of its ability to cake together and make kind of a hard surface. So if you're gonna sprinkle it, just a little sprinkling over the top, not a heavy mulch. So have I confused you enough where you really aren't sure whether you should bother adding coffee grounds to your garden? <laughs> if so, that might be okay because really the best way that you can use coffee grounds in your garden which takes advantage of all the positive things we talked about and gets rid of all the negative things we talked about is to add them to your compost bin or your compost heap. Adding coffee grounds to your compost bin is a really great way to invigorate a cold pile. The small particle size of the coffee grounds and their nitrogen content really gets the, uh, the uh, microorganisms back to work to create that heat that you need to make a really good compost. Now, even though they're brown in color, they actually are considered a green when adding them to your compost uh, heap, green versus brown mix. Now, if you wanna get more information on that and kind of what you need for that, I did a video back in November, which I will link below, five steps to great compost. So keep a container in the kitchen that you can just throw your, your coffee grounds in once you're moving on to the next day's coffee. Um, or once things start getting back to normal, you can go and frequent some of the coffee shops in your area and a lot of them are gonna have free grounds for you to take with you. Okay, if you've learned something so far, please do me a favor and give the video a thumbs up. That just lets YouTube know that there's something of value here um, and they'll push it out to other people looking for the same information. It takes two seconds. All right, on to our second subject, and that is wood ash. Now, here in the Northern Hemisphere, we are coming to the end, some places it is the end, of the cold season. And your fireplace might be piling up with ash. So it can be ashes from a fireplace or wood burning stove, or if you have a fire pit outside, what you're left with after a fire is ash. There's a couple things in this ash. You've got the white stuff that's very, very fine. And you've also got this very lightweight remnants of the wood. And this is biochar. Both of these ingredients in ash are very beneficial to your garden, especially growing food. The NPK of wood ash comes in at 0, 1, 3. So it's got a high level of potassium or potash. Now potassium or potash is really important for those of us growing food because it actually increases the size and quality of the fruits and vegetables that we are growing. Now like I said, the black remains in here, the little chunks, are biochar. And there's actually a way to make a bunch of high quality biochar um, on its own in your fireplace. And I might do a video about that in the future. Now, biochar is a fantastic ingredient for the garden because microscopically it is very complex with pores and it's got a ton of surface area. In fact, a single gram is thought to have the surface area of 1,000 square yards. So it gives a lot of surface area and little holes and nooks and crannies for a ton of microorganisms and fungi to live to be able to help process all of those micronutrients in your soil and increase the absorption of the nutrients as well. Now, all that being said, I can't use this directly into my garden because unlike coffee grounds, wood ash can have a dramatic effect on your soil's pH. And if you have an alkaline soil like I do, it's gonna make it more alkaline. And if you don't know what pH your soil is, uh, there are ways to do it, but one way is, one I'm going to show you right after this, you don't have to go out and buy any fancy gadgets or tests. In fact, all of the things you need, which is like three, are probably in your kitchen right now. So stay tuned just a couple seconds longer and I'm going to go through that process. It's really simple and it's fun. So if you find out you have acidic soil, wood ash is great for you because not only you're going to get all the benefits that I was talking about directly into the soil, it's gonna actually bring your pH into a level that's more neutral, which uh, most of the fruits and vegetables we love uh, really like. 
And another plus is the nitrogen in the wood ash has been completely burned up. So it's not gonna rob from the soil like the coffee grounds will. So you can mix it right in, you can sprinkle it on, either way would be fine. One word of warning though, if you have blueberries growing in your garden, they like acid, do not put this anywhere near the blueberries. I would also keep it away from your tomato plants because while they don't like as much acid as blueberries, they do like their soil a little bit on the acidic side, um, acidic to neutral, but just keep it away from both of those two and you should be fine. For the rest of us, add it to your compost. It's a great addition because it's um, gonna do all the benefits that we talked about, but it's also gonna, that biochar is going to give lots more space for all those good bugs in your, in your compost uh, heap to hang out while they're turning your precious yard waste into even more precious, beautiful black compost. Now, just a quick note on what types of wood not to use for your wood ash. It would be um, black walnut wood, which has an ingredient that's harmful to plants. Uh, any wood that's been painted or treated. And then you don't want to use like the charcoal briquettes that you get for your barbecue. So a lot of this advice hinges on whether your soil has a pH that is neutral, alkaline, or acidic. But how do you know? So there are some test kits that you can buy. There uh, are pH meters that you could stick into the soil and it has a digital readout. But soil pH in specific areas don't really change that often from month to month or even year to year. So buying a gadget, to me, it's just kind of a waste. So what I'm gonna do right now is a, a simple, fun test that's not gonna give you an exact number, but it's gonna give you a pretty good approximation and in my opinion, that's all I really need. So first you need to take a soil sample and it's good to get a little bit from different areas in your garden so you kind of get an overall view instead of you know maybe something actually in this area was making one part of it a certain way. Um, and you're gonna split that soil sample into two jars or any kind of container works, but I'm using clear for presentation purposes. Now you need three more ingredients. You need a bottle of water, and we're using bottled water because bottled water is pH neutral unless it's marketed as an alkaline water. Don't use that. You can drink that, but don't use it for this test. We're gonna be using vinegar, and it can be white vinegar, which is the cheapest kind. Um, I'm assuming apple cider would be the same, but this is our acid. And we're using baking soda for the opposite end of the pH spectrum. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to add water just above the level of the soil in each one of the jars. And then stir them around a little bit. Okay, now here's where it gets fun. This is where you might wanna grab a kid. Hi everyone. All right, so Noah's back. He's gonna help us with this experiment. It's gonna be kind of fun. So what we wanna find out is if acid or the baking soda is going to react with our solution here. So we're gonna start with the acid first. Now, if you have an acid soil, there is nothing for this solution, the acid solution to react with. So it's pretty much gonna do nothing. If you have an alkaline soil, it's going to start to bubble and fizz because it's reacting to the opposite pH in the jar. So you want to pour some of this in there? So do we have bubbles? Can you hear any fizzing? I can hear a little bit of fizzing. Yeah, and it's bubbling a little bit too. Yeah. So if you have a little fizz like we do, that means you've got a soil that is more on the alkaline style, uh, side. Now, if you have a lot of fizz, that means your soil is really far to the alkaline side. So this is a little bit closer to neutral alkaline. All right, you ready to try this one? All right, so now we're gonna add the baking soda. What is this supposed to do? All right, is it fizzing? Yes, it is. About the same as the other, right? Yep. 
So we've got about the same fizz in both. So what does that tell you? That tells you it's probably pH neutral right in the middle because we didn't get a huge strong reaction either way. Now, if you've got a kid. Like me. Or you're a big kid yourself. It might like be fun. Him? It might be fun to mix the two. Yeah. All right. Just pour this one into this one because there's more room. Okay. Do it kind of fast. That's good. Whoa! <laughs> That's so cool. It looks like Coke. It does. It's kind of like when you shake up a Coke bottle, and then when you like open it, and it's all like, yeah. If you like this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and if you want to see more videos with me and with my dad, <laughs> you can hit the post notification bell, and that may has you like or see remind them when things come out. Yeah, and um, my dad's Instagram will be right up there for you guys. See you, see you next, guys time. next time.